Listening to Soul Cafe Radio. Please join us now for uplifting music and messages for the mind and soul. And now to our studio and our host, the Wordmaster. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Soul Cafe Radio for Monday, December 18, 2017. On this morning's program, our title is He Leadeth Me, and our topic is being under the direction of God, especially as we prepare to head into a new year. Please join me as we have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for your guidance, your leadership over us, dear Lord, this past year. And Father, as we seek to embark in a new month, a new year, I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit may be with us, O oh God. Lord, the lessons that we have failed to take with us from this year, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you may allow us to learn these lessons and carry our carry these thoughts, dear God, with us into the new year. Lord, bless this program this morning. Bless every listener, I pray. And I pray that you will do for us that which I know, Lord, that we cannot do for ourselves. And help us understand that you are the one who are leading us. And as our introductory song said, Help us, Lord, because we can't help ourselves to trust and obey. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing in our lives. And bless everyone again, I pray, who is listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, this morning, our topic is, He Leads Me. Our scripture reading is taken from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and, in, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct. Things work for our 
2017. The topic is, Let Christ Guide. Scripture reading is taken from Matthew 13 and verse 10. The Bible says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. 
Christ gave his disciples to understand that he preached in parables and hid the great truths he presented on the similitudes that persons who have not the truth or the love of it, whose hearts are misled by their own tempers and gratified inclinations, could not know of his doctrines. In other words, dear listener, Jesus was not saying that he was seeking to hide the gospel. In fact, just so that you would know, the Bible says in John 7 and verse 17 that we will know if we want to know. And this is life eternal, Jesus says, that they might know thee. So, as it says here, it is not for them that want to know that he did it. It's for them that did not want to know and were rejecting and scoffing. And it's not because Jesus was intentionally hiding it from them. They themselves did not want to know. In fact, you would read throughout the gospel experience and you'll see that the Pharisees, the scribes, the lawyers, the so-called intellectuals were always scoffing and mocking and jeering at the parables, not discerning the meaning. And a lot of times it was at their own peril that they did not understand. It goes on to say, the unfruitful hearers are specified by our Lord as the skeptical, as I just said, the superficial or the secular. These cannot discern the moral glory of the truth or its practical personal application to their own hearts. They lack that faith which overcomes the world, and as a sure consequence, the world overcomes them. It is a close connection with God which opens and makes quick and sharp the understanding. Men in Christ they brought upon themselves that blindness that in seeing they see not, and the willful deafness that in hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Jesus told them that there was no reason for them to be surprised at what he had stated in regard to their unbelief, for Isaiah had predicted the same. From Matthew 13, verse 13 to 15, we read, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seen, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing ye shall hear, and not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For these people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Some of the people professing to believe the truth for this time will be in a similar position. Dear listener, that's referring to you and to me. Some of the people professing to believe the truth for this time will be in a similar position. They will not understand the marvelous work of God by which God confirms his word. They will not perceive that the working of God's spirit is wrought by his power, not because the evidence is not sufficient, but because the waywardness and the corruption of their own hearts will not suffer them honestly and candidly to weigh these evidences, for the sins of the people have hardened their hearts, and their conformity to the world has closed their conceptions of divine things. They are unwilling to be directed in the path of righteousness, which will lead them to the city of God. When you have time, look at John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. You'll see they beautifully express the experience of Nicodemus meeting with Christ and how initially he did not understand. And as Christ opened unto him the mysteries of the gospel like no other on that one-on-one -on -one experience, it must have changed his heart because the Bible states that he was afterwards a follower of Christ. Openly, not so much at first, but then after Christ crucified, he became an open follower. In closing, our trust must be wholly in God. He will be to us a present help in every time of need. Let us wait upon the Lord and exercise faith in his promises. He will hear us. Only believe. The captain of our salvation will not leave us to guide our own rock. We shall have his help and his wisdom just when he sees we need it. Again, this is taken from December 18th, this day with God. Let Christ guide you. He leadeth me, oh blessed thought, oh works with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leads.
with me. Sometimes it seems of deepest bloom. Sometimes where Eden's flowers bloom, by water still over troubled sea, still tis His hand that leadeth me. He leads. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. This is the Wordmaster inviting you to join me in January for our weekly Monday morning series, You Shall Receive Power, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on Soul Cafe Radio. Never ever leave. 
You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. Yes, again, you're listening to Soul Cafe Radio for Monday, December 18th, 2017. Before we get into this morning's study, I just want to say a special hello and a shout out to those of you who are listening on Facebook Live, those who are listening from WhatsApp, and to a very special person who contacted me yesterday and let me know how much of a blessing that this program has been. I want to say to all of you, if you get a chance, and when you get a chance, please visit soulcafeonline.com. I just updated the site and you can find information, especially on the radio page, about what's coming up in the month of January for Soul Cafe and Soul Cafe Radio. At this time, our study for this morning, He Leadeth Me. Our scripture reading for the main program was taken from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, in case you missed it. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lead not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. But our study deals with Psalms 23, the shepherd Psalms, as it's come to be known. Please join me as we have a short word of prayer to begin. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you now to seek your guidance and your direction in the words that you will have for your people, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will speak, Lord. Speak through me, dear God. Speak for me. Lord, as the song just said just now, I need your direction in how to encourage and uplift your people as you are leading us from one year into the next. And I'm asking you, dear God, to give me the words to strengthen the hearts of your people as we go into uncharted territory. This I do ask humbly in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Psalms 23, verses 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms 23, verses 1 to 6. You'll remember the Apostle Paul, his prayer in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where the Bible records that three times he prayed for, as he calls it, a thorn in the flesh to be removed. And as he prayed, the answer came back to him from Jesus Christ himself. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. This morning, the question I want to ask each and every one of you out there is, is God's grace sufficient for you? Is God's grace enough? You've prayed, and the direction that he seems to be leading you is some strange place that you never thought yourself going. You often heard them say that when one door opens, another door opens, or in the Christian's case, when one door opens, the windows of heaven open and pour you out blessings that there be not room enough to receive. Then you prayed, and you asked, and somehow door and window seems shut. And so again I ask, is God's grace enough? As you prepare to close the books on 2017 and usher in 2018, have we learned the lessons, as I said earlier, have we learned the lessons that are preparing us to enter into a new phase of life, a new phase of existence? For many of us, 2017 saw many, many changes in our lives. Some were good, some were bad, and some we looked at indifferently. 
Maybe for you on a personal level, you had an experience where, as one of our songs says, you can't see God's hand leading. But friends, I want to let you know that what Jesus said to Paul that day is true. And if you have never experienced God's grace being enough, you need to get back into your prayer closet and ask. Ask him. Ask him, my friends, to just shower you with that grace. The Bible calls his grace abundant. It's good enough. And so, as I was sharing with a brother the other day, when you pray, Lord, lead me into this job. Lord, lead me into the significant other. Lord, lead me. Friends, I want to let you know clearly that prayer is not permission. Just because you pray doesn't give you license to get off your knees and to go blindly into a job, into a relationship, etc. Prayer does not equal permission. Like the psalm says, wait on the Lord. Wait on Him. Don't lean to your own understanding. Make sure that it is God that is leading you. I want to tell you something at this juncture. Our Father does care. And a lot of times it may not seem that way. I know this for a fact. I've experienced that for a fact. A lot of times you prayed and you prayed. The song says, you prayed as best you can. But now, and especially now, as we close out the books in 2017 and anticipate what lies ahead, what challenges, what new situations are waiting us. We need to leave everything in God's hands. Our Father cares. In fact, that caring of a God does not go back to some place in time where God created a man and says or shows that he loves him. It does not go far back in time when that man sinned and God said, I will clothe you. Beloved, our Bible tells us that God has loved us with an everlasting love. And with that everlasting love, he draws us. So maybe today, on December 18, 2017, maybe you don't love God with the finite love that you possess. But I promise you, if you surrender if you surrender to Him loving you, then His love will be returned. One of my favorite quotes, only by love is love awakened. God will love you if you allow Him to love you. Again, our Father cares. The Bible says in the quotes in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 9, I believe, that when God found us, we were not in the best of conditions. We were not the prettiest, the handsomest. We weren't the richest, the smartest. In fact, he says that we were bloody and naked. And he took us up, he washed us, and he clothed us. And he made us into the type of people that he would have us to be. Our Father cares. And so, like I said, initially... Maybe the direction that God is leading you seems contrary to where you want to go. But when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. That's an amazing piece of request, isn't it? Because, first of all, you're being asked to trust someone you cannot see. And then you're asked to trust in a direction you dare not go on your own. You would dare not even go with all the military might in all the world. But the thing is, dear listener, the thing is, if God bids you, if God says go, then his bidding is his, is his enabling. In other words, if he says for you to go, he will give you the power 
to go. Children of Israel, classic example. I can't tell you in my research, in my studies, how many times I came across the expression, go up and possess the land, go and possess the land, go and possess the land. I will be with you. I will fight for you. I will guide you. And yet Israel on the borders of that very land complained and cursed. Oh, we can't go in. There are giants in the land. Did you bring us here to kill us? Did you bring us here to die? I'm reminded again of another experience of rebellion. God, in the person of Jesus Christ, bid a man to walk in water. And my friends, I'm telling you, in his mind, it must have been some sort of wow moment. I'm being asked to walk on water. And that's what it may seem like for many of us when we are asked to depend on this God that we cannot see. It's as if we've been asked to walk on water. Nothing concrete, nothing solid, and at any moment we can sink. But again I say to you, if God bids you, if God says go, if God says come with me on this water, then God's bidding is God's enabling. When you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. Abraham, the icon of faith. God says to him, Abraham, get away from your family, get away from all that you know, and come to a land that I will show you. And the Bible says, by faith, Abraham left. Because Abraham, his trust and confidence was in God. Moses, prince of Egypt, heir to his grandfather's throne, polished, primed, and ready to take control of this massive empire. God says, no Moses, this is not for you. I have a better way. And wonder of wonders, God does not say to him, Hey Moses, go and get the best men in Egypt as you can that trust you and go and rebel against the house of Pharaoh and free my people. No sir, no ma'am. In fact, what happens is that for the next 40 years, Moses has to go and take care of sheep. Yes, you heard me right. For the next 40 years, Moses had to go and take care of sheep. Why? Because it took 40 years to get out of him what he had learned in his first 40 years of life. To learn to depend on military power, to learn to trust his might and his genius, to learn to trust in the arms. Friends, in those years of tending sheep, Moses developed that meekness that the Bible talks about. Moses developed that patience the Bible talks about. Moses developed a trust in God like no other. That's why Moses was able to deliver the children of Israel by faith. Not with his might, not with his power, not with all the armies of Egypt by faith. God had led and Moses followed. But you know something dear listener? Here's the truth. God never leads his people otherwise than they would choose to be led if they could see the end from the beginning. And that's how I would like to close out our time together today. We began by looking at a devotional thought and we'll end by looking at a devotional thought. Scripture says in Romans 8 verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8 28. The fact that we are called upon to endure trial shows that the Lord Jesus sees in us something precious which he desires to develop. If he saw in us nothing whereby he might glorify his name, he would not spend time in refining us. He does not cast worthless stones into his furnace. It is valuable ore that he refines. 
Notice this now. God never leads his children otherwise than they would choose to be led if they could see the end from the beginning and discern the glory of the purpose which they are fulfilling as co-workers with him. All that has perplexed us in the providences of God will in the world to come be made plain. The things hard to be understood will then find explanation. The mysteries of grace will unfold before us. Where our finite minds discovered only confusion and broken promises, we shall see the most perfect and beautiful harmony. We shall know that infinite love ordered the experience that seemed most trying. He who is imbued with the Spirit of Christ abides in Christ. The blow that is aimed at him falls upon the Savior who surrounds him with his presence. Whatever comes to him comes from Christ. He has no need to resist evil, for Christ is his defense. Nothing can touch him except by our Lord's permission, and all things that are permitted work together for good to them that love God. Our Heavenly Father has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. Those who accept the one principle of making the service of God supreme will find perplexities vanish and a plain path before their feet. As a little child, trust the guidance of him who will keep the feet of his saints. 1 Samuel 2.9 As we commit our ways to him, he will direct our steps. Taken from the little devotional book of Father Cares, page 66 and 67. So friend, as we close out our time today together, I'm asking you, to ask Jesus to do something for you in this moment. And that simply is, ask him to have his way. my 
my being absolute sway fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only always living Food for the Mind and Soul This is the Word Master inviting you to join me in January for our weekly Monday morning series, You Shall Receive Power, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on Soul Cafe Radio. And yes, indeed, friend, I would like to invite you to join me every Monday in January, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Eastern Time, as we look at the thought, you shall receive power. And if you are in the Miami Gardens area of Florida, I invite you to join me live as we do our Monday, our weekly morning devotion. It's entitled, Access to Power. For more information, please go to Soul Cafe Online slash radio. As we get ready to go up the air this morning, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us this morning. Those who joined us live on Facebook, those who joined us from WhatsApp, those who joined us on the internet in a whole. And I just want to say that this topic that we dealt with today of God's leading, that is something that's near and dear to my heart. As I often tell people, and it's a fact, I'm hard-headed, and God would probably speak to me louder than the loudest thunder, and he'd say, go left, when somehow I heard, go right. But the beautiful thing is, that I've discovered, is that when I, when we listen to the voice of God, what amazing results happen, and the results indeed are sweet. God does direct our path, as the theme scripture says. And so this morning, as we close out, I just want to speak to someone today, right now. Maybe you have never had the experience that we've talked about today, of trusting God, of presenting yourself to Him, and leaving yourself there, trusting God enough to take care of you. My friends, I invite you into that relationship where the God of Abraham who said, I will go, even though he had no clue where he was going, I invite you into that relationship. I invite you into the relationship the God of Isaac, who said to his father, yes, I surrender to the will. Not knowing what was to become of him, if he would offer himself as a sacrifice. I'm asking you, friend, to surrender to the God of Jacob, who had no clue whether one day to the next he'll be dead or not because of his brother's wrath. Yet trust in God, who says, Yea, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as wool. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as snow. And all was forgiven in God's hand, in Jacob's deception. And we see where God changed his name because of his experience. He was now an overcomer. And friend, that is the relationship that I'm inviting you to enter into. One where you allow God to lead you day by day, step by step, into every situation and mark my words, no matter what. 
2018 is ahead of us. I can promise you that none of us, and I speak for every last person, especially in these United States, none of us have ever been through a year like we just did. But I know that there are greater things that lie on the horizon. And I want each and every one of us to be fortified and surrendered in God's will. I pray, my dear listener, that if you're leading to your own understanding, if you're trusting into your own way, please stop, turn around, and trust God's way. Lean to His understanding. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you so much, O oh God, for what you're doing, for what you have allowed us to hear and the messages that came from this medium. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your everlasting arms that are leading us. I pray, like never before, that we will learn to trust and obey, knowing that there is no other way but to trust and obey. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that we would all surrender to your promise to never leave us alone, to never forsake us. Lord, help us to trace your heart, O oh God, and trust it, even though we can't trace your hand. But we can trust you, O oh God, because we know your heart. Lord, you have promised that your words that go out of your mouth never return to you void. And you have promised that when the enemy shall come in like a flood, you will lift up a standard against him. And so, Lord Jesus, we place ourselves into your hands. And comes what may, O oh God, we will trust you, Lord. We will trust you, and not just that, Lord, we will obey you. When you ask us to go through the midst of the seas, to the midst of the rivers, Lord, we will go. Father, I pray that our resolve may be a steel, O oh God, as we face the unknown, knowing that he who had begun such a good work in us will continue to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, we pray. Yeah. 
it clearly But he sees the first and the last And like a tapestry He's weaving you and me To someday be just like him This is the Wordmaster inviting you to join me in January for our weekly Monday morning series, You Shall Receive Power, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on Soul Cafe Radio. You've been listening to Soul Cafe Radio. Join us next time for powerful messages, music, and more. And remember to visit our website at www.soulcafeonline.com.